turn it over to you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm Jamie. I work with the City of Toronto in Historic Sites and Museums, uh, which is run by Economic Development and Culture. Uh, there we teach a lot of different programs um, between youth programs as well as adult programs. A lot of it, it has a historical background, so homesteading from the basics. Uh, so we don't have a lot of modern tools, although you can definitely use it. So we're going to do a few different demonstrations, um, also which we also teach at the camps as well. Um, so we're going to talk about like what is homesteading, why is it important, um, some of the demonstrations are going to be how to build your own compost bin, um, why composting is important as well, and uh, just more about um, preserving and saving seeds. Um, so the first thing is what exactly is homesteading? A lot of people think homesteading is like, you know, a big farm with chickens and ducks and, and that can definitely be true, but it can also be just a planter of herbs in your apartment window. So it doesn't necessarily have to be on a big scale. It can be small as well. Um, it's extremely important, especially in this pandemic, I think. Um, last time I went to the store, they actually had the garden center closed. It was deemed non-essential. That uh, is a little ironic that you could buy strawberries, but not a strawberry plant. I don't know if that has changed at all. Um, but not just that, if you actually notice in grocery stores now, um, a lot of companies are saying that it's based on convenience, but if you go to Costco, if you buy celery, it's already cut for you and they're in bags. Um, it's same with mangoes and different kinds of fruit. So there's things that you can buy in groceries and you can just regrow from your own scraps. And some companies are kind of making that uh, impossible if they're taking out the root system or if they're taking out the base. Um, preventing you from doing that. Um, we can still save seeds and we can still do it that way as well, but sometimes instead of, let's say in the pandemic right now, or if you can't buy seeds, if you can't buy soil, if you can't go to the dollar store and buy pots, um, how do you get started? So I can show you today how to get started without any of that and you can make it all yourself. Um, so why it also is really important is you are what you eat. So um, it's really good to know where your food is coming from, um, how it's being produced, how that's affected even worldwide, how it's being transported. Um, so if you think of something like vanilla bean, um, I, I know that there was this meme going around lately where where is vanilla extract? Um, vanilla flavoring come from and it's actually true that yes it comes from uh, beaver <laughs> anal sac um, it's how they mark their territory so but if you use a vanilla bean you can use that same flavoring and make like a vanilla um, express or oil and then you don't have to use a beaver um, same with things like oh, I think we're kind of getting out of touch where I had um, my own sister come to um, the farmers market that I helped run at the museum and when she came there, her and her cheerleading team were um, helping just, you know, let people know that we had a new farmer's market in town. And a lot of them surprisingly didn't know if an apple was grown from a tree or a ground. And to me, I thought they were joking, like, you have to be joking. How do you not know that? But a lot of the youth that I find today, they, they don't necessarily have to know because you just always go to No Frills or Walmart and your fruits and veggies are always accessible. They're always available there. Um, so you don't need to know where your food came from, how long it took to get to you. And, you know, if you have an apple that sits on a on your desk for a week, what's going to happen? It's going to rot. So how long did that apple take to come to Canada if it's in the middle of winter and it wasn't grown here? So, and if that's the case, what did they do to that apple in order to preserve it to make sure it wasn't rotten by the time it got here? Um, so it's some of the hormones that we're putting into our foods, the GMOs, the chemicals that if we're trying to avoid because we don't want them in our body, um, it's a good question to ask where things came from. Another fun one is cinnamon bark, um, because a lot of people didn't realize that I've talked to, didn't realize that this is actually bark from a tree. Um, we don't, I can't have that in Canada. It actually comes from Sri Lanka, whereas something like nutmeg, that would actually come from Indonesia. Um, so just kind of having respect for where things grow and how they get here is also why homesteading is pretty important. 
Um, so how would you get started? One, if you didn't want to go buy containers, or if you couldn't, for that matter right now, um, we have a whole slew of different containers, including Parmesan cheese. <laughs> um, you can just poke holes through the bottom, sour cream containers, yogurt containers, anything like that. Um, and then you have your pots that way. Um, you don't want to waste anything. And I think homesteading is also um, respectful for the environment. And it's also very resor resourceful. So right now we're in my greenhouse and it's actually built out of pasta bottles um, and recycled stained glass, as well as um, old windows that were thrown out, uh, people just threw out and I happened to pick up. Um, so again, nothing can kind of, you don't have to waste anything. Um, even other preserves, you can use pasta bottles for preserves. You can use it for oils. You can use it um, to save your seeds because it's airtight if you seal it. Um, so all these different uses, and you can get it just from your regular groceries as well. So you don't have to go out and purchase anything, which is also very important. Um, and for, um, we're going to talk about compost. This one's going to be fun. So we're going to build our own compost bin. So there's different ways that you can compost. Um, one of them is how I do it now, but this is an upgrade. This is called a food cycler. Um, it actually is an electronic version. So we definitely did not do this at the museum. Um, but this is pretty neat because it will actually dry all of your scraps overnight and it will give your plants a lot of nutrients. This is actually the compost that is left afterwards um, after it is dehydrated all night long. So it's your food for your plants. Um, so you don't have to have anything go to waste. Um, composting is extremely important because the one thing that most people don't realize is your food scraps absolutely do not break down in landfills. Um, instead of it decomposing in landfills, all your organic matter, which is your paper, your wood, your food scraps, um, they're actually stuck in this limbo state and they end up releasing methane gas. Uh, methane is actually 30 times more powerful than carbon. And actually there was a stat listed in the US that 16% uh, of all methane emissions in the US comes from landfills, which makes your food scraps, um, if it were a country, to be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gas emissions behind China and the US. So if you actually wanted to make a serious impact just on the environment and sustainability alone, um, creating a, your comp own compo compost bin is uh, a great way to do that. Um, if you're in Durham region, um, we have, you know, the city will come pick it up in most cities, they have this. And it's great because um, then once a year, they'll actually give it back to you. Um, the only drawback I've personally felt with that is that one, it's first come first serve. And if you don't aren't there first thing in the morning, generally they're actually taken up pretty quick. Um, there was a year where I missed it. Then um, the other issue is they don't sort through it. So um, there's some people that just don't realize what can be put in or can be put into a compost bin. So you'll get like plastic throughout it as well. So you kind of have to pick out throughout the city compost. Um, and there's also a limit. So you normally only allow two bins, which, you know, if you're big into gardening, that, that can go up real fast. So if you make your own compost bin, you can actually have that all year round. And it's also a way to get rid of your scraps. Um, you can have worms. Worms are great. And a lot of people are a big fan of worms, but um, they're great. They don't smell. You can keep them indoors, uh, outdoors in the summer, indoors in the winter. Um, they can actually be in a small bin on your countertop and you would never know that they're in there. Um, you don't have to have them to make your own bin, but they just help the uh, decomposition go by a lot faster and smoother. Um, there's also something called the uh, bakashi, um, and that's pretty easy because it actually uses enzymes to break your food down. But um, again, if you didn't want to use that, you could just make what we're going to briefly make right now. Um, so if you wouldn't mind passing me the compost bin. Um, so you just use a plastic container. Um, and the number one thing that you need is to have oxygen. So, yeah, I'll just put it in here. Could you grab this? Perfect. All right. So this is 
gonna be our compost bin. i have already drilled some holes into this bin and um you do want some oxygen in it so we have some on the top some on the bottom just to study or flow the holes are pretty small so you're not gonna have any big material go through just to do two more because my friend thought that this drilling part was cool it definitely is but not as cool here can i hang you that yeah you all right so then you got your playing bin and from here you want to use just gray all your stuff in your yard so you want to have about an inch to two inches of different dried leaves you could have flowers um, as well and then from here you also want to have some scrap paper um, you can actually also use your paper like your bills i know a lot of people shred their bills for protection which is great um, but that is actually not recyclable shredded paper and i don't think anyone's going to start gluing it together to steal your information but it's still a slight risk if you're very important so you could actually put them in here and it will become soil instead of going to the landfill so and it will be completely um, turn into soil so you don't have to worry about anyone gluing it back together if that was a concern okay. so this just has to be broken up slightly it doesn't have to be too much it will all break down and then from there you just want to add a little bit of soil on top it doesn't have to be much but just to get everything started off and moving just gonna add oil onto that. Perfect. Cool. And from that, then all you have to do is the best creme of the crop is add all of your food scraps. So for this to have the best richness you can possibly do, you want to mainly do fruit and veggies. You want to avoid like bones or any kind of oils, refined oils or um, processed sugars and there is your homemade compost bin you want to do about right. keep it about a 50 50 ratio of paper or cardboard to uh, food scraps and you feed this it's almost like a live organism so you feed this um, throughout your scraps uh, maybe once a week and you also have to water it as well just a little bit once a week and you stir it all up um, pretty soon you'll have nice rich soil if you want to add worms to it that will make it go by faster and you can have it for your garden if you don't have a garden or if you don't want that much soil you can put this onto gg or marketplace and i promise it will be gone in a heartbeat um, and it's great stuff and then you know you have no waste so that right there and this is, is this is a small batch compared to the bin you really yeah have. i i have a very very large bin of this um this is just one that would fit in the greenhouse as a demonstration um, so there is how to build a compost bin. Um, another thing that we're going to show you how to do while we can do it in the time frame is how to make butter. Um, so a lot of people think that you have to make butter with a butter churn, which we have here. However, if you've ever had one of these from Kilner, um, they're neat, but they actually take quite a long time. You just do a simple whipping cream in a mason jar and you just shake it. You shake it and you shake it. And actually, if you let it rest, it takes some time as well. Um, in about 10 to 15 minutes, you'll have a clump of butter and then it will also be separated into buttermilk. The buttermilk you can use for buttermilk pancakes. Um, if you didn't have milk at home, or sorry, buttermilk at home, you could make it by putting vinegar in your milk. Um, but this is a really cheap way to make butter. It's actually $3 of a difference if you buy this versus buying actual butter and you actually get twice the amount. So um, you can do it that way. So my friend and videographer is going to shake it periodically while this is going on. So I'm gonna make this some butter um, just to see how simple and easy that is. All right, um, another thing that we want to talk about is um, a seed demonstration. So this is going to be fun. 
Um, so there's a difference between seed storing, which I'm sure all the gardeners out there realize, but uh, there's seed storing and there's seed bank. Um, so seed storing generally is, you know, what's you're going to save your seeds this summer for next year um, planting and or the year or two. Whereas there's a seed bank where that one's pretty amazing because you might want to save it if you're ever low on income or if you're low on uh, food, then you actually have a backup where if food is short right now, you can start your own garden and you can have a wide variety of different seeds. I actually heard on the radio that they are starting a seed bank on the moon as well. Um, so <laughs> it's pretty neat. There's uh, thousands and thousands of variations of different kinds of different fruits and veggies. You can combine them as well. Um, same with like honey and bees, right? Like, you know, there's different honey based on where the bees are eating. So when I went to New Orleans, the honey was actually black because they were eating off of like swamps and bayous, um, which I thought that was wonderful. Whereas here, you know, it's like an amber. Um, so it depends on, you know, where you are, creates a new variation as well. Um, so there's different kinds of ways you can do things. <clears throat> Just want to make sure, can they hear this? It can be Maybe. Can you guys hear that shaking the butter? Is, that... is it too loud? <coughs> no, it's not. Okay. That be fine. okay, so um, we're going to do a few different demonstrations for seed saving. Um, if you actually put seeds in, like wash some seeds out and put it in water, if you put it in water for about two to four days, your good seeds will sink to the bottom. Any bad seeds will kind of create this mold and they'll float to the top. Um, so that's how you can separate the good from the bad. Once you have washed them, rinsed them, um, then you dry them really well and you can freeze them. And if you freeze them, that kind of gets any um, pests out of it. And then you can store it and that's how you would have a seed bank. You would store it a long time. You want to keep it into a, a dark, um, cool place. But if you're just keeping them in general for um, next year, then you know, normally it's pretty good just to have them in a regular mason jar and they last as well. Um, so there is multi multitude of uses for something. So I know people that will have one grapefruit or one orange and they might just, you know, eat the orange, they throw out the seeds, they throw out the peel, they do everything else. Um, whereas you can eat 100% of an apple, you could use 100% of an orange or orange peel. So we're going to show you how to do that as well. Um, so for something really simple, like if you wanted the grapefruit, obviously you can have grapefruit juice and you can juice it. Um, you could strain it and have your seeds from that. And then from your seeds, you could plant it. Um, citrus plants, they can grow in Canada, but you have to keep them in greenhouses for the winter. Um, this one here is a lemon tree. It's pretty going tall. Um, lemon tree takes about three to five years to fruit. This one is in year three right now. So mm -hmm. it's doing mm -hmm. pretty good so far. Um, hopefully it fruits this year. Okay. So um, after you've taken your seeds out, um, one way that you can do this is by spraying some water onto the paper towel directly wants to work. Okay, I'm just going to dip it right into the juice. Yeah, and um, you can put it into, some people do plastic bags. Um, if you are, you know, good with homesteading, you want to avoid plastic in the world. Um, I use silicone baggies. These are great. They can go in the freezer. They're reusable. They um, go into the dish washer and you don't have to waste all the plastic in the world so you just put them right there and then in a couple days you'll actually see them they'll start to sprout and you just have a little tiny hole at the other end so it gets some oxygen you got the label yeah i've already done the same with dragon fruit as well as apples so that's one way you can do that um, another way to plant something would be directly as it is um, these are beeswax wraps that I make from my beehive. Um, they're extremely easy to make and it replaces tin foil, ceram wrap. So again, it's another um, 
zero waste friendly thing to do. Um, if you're planting any sort of peppers, you just want to kind of break your seeds up and let them fall down. Um, you can plant them directly into the soil, but if you actually use the pepper itself, then that is perfect because it will actually use it as nutrients and like compost just to break it up that way. And then you just put some soil on top. Okay, there we go, and you just water it. Um, so you can use regular water, but um, I see a lot of people buying really expensive fertilizer, but for any gardener, they're, you know, the magic trick, which is banana water. Mm -hmm. um, it's literally just your banana peels and you put it in water. Um, it normally is better if you let it sit for about an hour, but I've had heard some people will leave it in for three days. The longer, the better. Um, if it's small, it soaks in there, you'll have potassium, you have magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, all those minerals are going to be um, added into the water and seeped in. So then it is a magical free uh, way to just take care of your plants. There we go. Um, another thing that you can do with this, if you wanted to feed your plants, which is another famous trick for gardeners, especially if you have a greenhouse and the hose is not close to the greenhouse conveniently, which is exactly what happens with my case. Um, you can take rope and if you tape it into this container so that it stays, you can put this into your plants and it will actually suck up through the rope and water your plants for you. So that's great if you're going away on vacation after COVID, hopefully. There we go. So that's an easy thing to do. I just find that so cool. Yeah, um, there's a lot of things you can grow directly, including um, what we just did with pepper. You can do with pomegranate. Um, you can also do with tomatoes. You can, again, if you're, anyone's ever interested in beeswax wraps, I can show you how to make that it's really easy so the tomatoes they actually have seeds right in them so you could actually just cut and plant directly the same thing as the pepper and it will grow just like that um, tomatoes are really good to grow as well i know that some people like the cage um, but i had a lot of people comment that if you put them on the cage, sometimes the weight of the plant uh, weighs them down and crushes the tomatoes. So throwing them on a trellis um, in a arch is great for tomato plants. There we go. So there we got our tomato plants. Water that with some banana water. Ooh, nice. You can see that grow in a couple days in the sun. And again, same thing with the pomegranate. You can break the seeds up as well if you'd like, but you don't necessarily have to. Which, there you go. Okay. Add more to that later. Um, another couple tricks that you can do, there is um, dye. You can make dye out of uh, food in case you didn't can go buy dye right now. Um, it's onion peels that will make a green dye. And if you use the um, leaves off of carrots, that will actually make a yellow dye. So you can actually make dye out of your own food scraps. Um, another thing you can do with the food scraps if you're not throwing into your compost, if you save it in your freezer, you could actually make a vegetable stock out of it. Um, so and then you could throw it in your compost. So there's a double use out of it. Another thing that you can do is regrow your veggies. So this is a little uh, mosh posh of different things I've had growing for the last week. Um, just, sure. Okay, 
Okay, so in here we have our beets, and as you can see, all I did was I used the beet, I cut the top off, um, and then you can see that it's already starting to regrow. Onions, you can put them in water. You don't necessarily have to. You can put them right in the ground and they'll do the same thing. Some people have said that if you let them root a little bit in the water, it just helps it a bit more. Um, leeks, lettuce, same thing. You can regrow a head of lettuce. You can regrow carrots. Uh, bok choy, sweet potato, great because they'll actually, one big one here, but they will root and regrow into a climbing vine. Um, Massive. Yes. <laughs> Have. Um, you can regrow your pineapple, you can regrow um, avocados. There's actually a pit inside avocados that was split, which this one's has split. Same with mango. There is a pit, and inside the pit is a seed, and then you can see it's already starting to root and grow. Um, and again, all of this. Um, you could have a full garden utterly for free just from your scraps that uh, you were going to buy anyways to make a stir fry. And the garlic you can do too. Yeah, garlic. Uh, if you plant a single garlic clove, we'll make a head of garlic. Um, and then there is aloe. A lot of people love aloe because you know you can freeze it. And it's good for sunburns. It's good for um, moisturizing and skincare routine. Um, so. This one here, I actually cut a leaf off of it and planted it. And um, you can either put it into a banana or you can actually put it into honey. Um, so honey is a natural uh, rooting hormone. So if you have your honey and you just dip it into that, you can plant it in there and it'll help with roots. Um, so I planted this one a few weeks ago and you can already see that there is a bunch of new ones growing from one um, leaf. So another way you can do that as well with a lot of succulents is if you have a water bottle, you could cut a bunch of holes in the water bottle with a little bit of water at the bottom with the lid shut, and you'll see that there will be lots of new roots in that one as well. Ooh, that'd be um, cool. Yeah, that's a lot of fun stuff. So I'm going to also show you some rose bushes because we all know how expensive roses are, especially because. Uh, you know how far some of them have to come from and not afraid. No. We are going to do that exact same thing. So again, honey um, is a natural rooting agent. And it's great for plants. So if you just dip it right into it, don't worry, we're not going to eat this honey after. And you can actually stab this right into a potato plant. Um, potatoes are great nutrients. So we can plant that right in there. And we can do this five times and this will actually turn into an entire rose bush. Um, do you have a scissors? Um, there's scissors right here. Oh, yeah. Perfect. So um, in order for this to work, we don't actually need the pretty rose. So you can do a lot of things with the rose. One, you can hang it for decoration. Mm -hmm. um, I only hang these ones because these are all the ones that my husband gave me. So uh, I feel sentimental towards them. And so he just doesn't think I throw them out. So you can have all of that hang up as decoration or um, rose petals are great for a lot of different things. You can dry them in the oven or um, leave them out to dry and it will, you can make great potpourri if you wanted to. Um, it's great for decoration, for accents if you wanted that. You could have it for skin care. Um, but another great thing that you can make out of rose petals is going to be um, rose tea. Rose mm -hmm. tea, if you let it steep for four hours, it's really good, especially for menstrual cramps. You just strain it, tastes great, and there is going to be your rose tea. Um, you can also make rose water, and you, you can do a lot of baking with that, or you can make Epsom salt, um, bath scrubs mixtures as well. All right, so there is rose water, 
um, and rose plants all from one lovely bunch of flowers that someone has gifted you. Another thing for preserves, um, I guess I didn't know nothing's going to go to waste. So oranges, if you have the orange, you can eat the, actually juice your orange first, save your seeds, and then from that you can have your peel. So I put this in vinegar and this is how I use for all purpose cleaner. Um, it's great, it cleans, does disinfectant, and it smells great like oranges. Another thing that you can do with oranges is make this. Um, it's a fun little craft and they used to do this in the 1800s. Um, it's called a pomander, so it is an orange or a clementine. You can use any citrus fruit and you stab a bunch of cloves, whole cloves into it. Now, if you um, seen some of these, they're ornamental for Christmas for decoration. This would not happen in history. You were lucky if you got this for a Christmas present and you devoured every bite. They would be appalled by us wasting it as decoration. Um, but now we waste it as decoration. So if you did a design in it, it might last for two to four days um, before it would start to go moldy. But I have a coworker. She um, had one as a kid and she's in her 40s now and she did one in camp. And because she had sealed it everywhere, it actually dries it out where it smells delicious and it's like a perfume, um, like an air freshener. You could put it in your underwear drawer. Um, we have these a lot now that are selling in stores where they have like lavender bombs and um, or little satchels that have like different herbs in it, um, which are pretty neat, but it stems again from this. Same with charcoal. I feel like that's having a comeback right now where you're seeing a lot of people use charcoal toothpaste um, or charcoal. Um, face, yeah, face scrub, and that actually is all again back from you know uh, 1800s, where nothing went to waste. So they actually took it right from your fireplace and made soap out of it. Um, and you know, if if it's not broken, then if it is broken, you fix it. Someone had a question about the roses. Yeah. Um, do you only use homegrown roses? I'd be concerned about florists purchase roses. Is chemicals and sprays, not sure. Of this stuff. Yeah, um, so you can use, you know, florist, but preferably homegrown is best. Um, same with your seeds. If you're saving seeds, they always try to say, you know, like to save the seeds when the plant is the most mature um, and ripe so that you know where it's coming from. So even if you don't necessarily um, know florist, if you go to the farmer's market, if you know the sources, um, that's always like I think the most important is but once you have it you can always keep regrowing it which is great um, okay so the other thing that we did with oranges and a lot of people think this is weird but it's delicious this is orange um, candy orange peels so you can actually eat the orange peels itself they are great and tasty and if I didn't tell you it was an orange peel you might not ever know about it um, it is a historic recipe and they used to have this um, around Christmas time as well. Um, along with different spices of cinnamon that makes and cloves. Um, you could also try out your citrus fruit and hang them. So we have a uh, grapefruit and some apples here. Um, these are pretty great because yeah, you can use them for decoration, but you know, you could also just throw them in your tea if you wanted to add a little citrus flavor. Um, they look good in the sunlight too. Yeah, again, a lot of people are using them now just as decoration, but it necessarily wouldn't be that way back then. Um, another thing that we have in the greenhouse is lavender. We have a lot of lavender drying up, um, as well as wheat and eucalyptus, but you can make lavender oil from that. Um, you can make soap out of it. We make lavender shortbread cookies, so it's a lot of different usages for that. Mm -hmm. Um, and we just have different canning preserves here because um, that's one thing I notice again, a lot of people just don't realize um, if you're not regularly into the gardening is when things are in season. So again, historically speaking, if you wanted an apple and you didn't have it in the late fall, then you aren't gonna have that apple again for an entire year unless you preserved it. Apples are really great because they are so versatile. So if you have an apple, you can make applesauce. Um, you can make what I'm making back here is apple cider vinegar. Um, again, you're just using some of the core pieces that a lot of people just throw out, or again, you're going to throw into your compost bin. Um, so you just have to preserve things. If you want, you know, raspberries or strawberries, there's your jam. And um, 
different preserves of that. We have our freezer space, so of course there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Um, otherwise, um, question, how, how long should orange peel soak in vinegar before use and how long before it expires? I let it soak for about a week, about a week, week and a half. Um, and before it expires, honestly, I feel like it, it actually just gets stronger while it's sitting there. But for potency, I use it within a month usually. Um, and apple cider vinegar takes about two weeks for it to sit and steep. And then you'll have apple cider vinegar um, that way as well. Very cool. Any other questions? She did with those for now. Okay. Great. Um, do you need all this stuff on here? Do you want me to start moving okay. a few things? Okay. Um, so that's a lot of different things that I had listed, um, just for some basics. Did anyone have any questions on anything or how to save seeds or questions? <laughs> so does it anyone have a question? You can unmute yourself or you can put it in, in the chat if you prefer, but I'm sure you've had lots of ideas as you listen to Jamie, so I'm saying to ask. Where can I buy, so the, where can I buy the compost dehydrator and for how much? Yes, so that one, um, it's called Food Cycler and it's just that company, a food cycler that sells it. Um, they are pretty pricey. They're wonderful, I highly recommend them. Um, you can do a small batch, it, takes overnight um, for the whole heating process, but um, it generally it only takes like half an hour to dehydrate that. It's the same electricity to heat the kettle one time, so it's not even, um, you know, an extense or an obscene amount of heat that you have to worry about, um, but they're about $300. Um, the good news is that I had mine, I had mine for years, and um, I had an issue where uh, the lid wasn't closing properly, and because of that, I just, you know, emailed the company thinking if there was a part I could get, and I was way out of warranty, and they just sent me a whole brand new one, so if there's any issue, like, um, they're a great company where they definitely want to help you um, with that, and it's also great because, um, I don't know if you still have that compost bin, it's about right here. Um, if you see the inside of it, but it's dehydrated, right, so you would just fill it right into your plants. And actually, this whole container is probably the equivalent of an entire garbage bag of scrap food. Um, so it just breaks it down and pulverizes it into nothing. Um, so it's great for space and it's wonderful for plants. I actually tested this out and I put it on one plant and left it um, one plant without this. And it was a major, it was actually this lemon tree, um, but I have another lemon tree that is uh, inside and it's the same year, same plant, same everything, and it's half the size and it's just from putting um, this compost into it. So I would highly recommend the food cycler, but it is a little pricey on the pricey side. Um, or you could just, you know, make your own compost bin too and either will, should do the trick. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so, so Jamie, in regard to homesteading, there's there's always a lot more to learn. Um, Lots. So, so um, I'm just wondering uh, how how what's the trend in homesteading? There seems to be a lot of groups out there yes. that I'm hearing about ever since we signed up to do this workshop. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm hearing, I even have a lot of friends that are always interested more, especially now with the pandemic too, with everyone just kind of staying at home or, you know, you're seeing that food prices at stores are going up or just the fact that, you know, people are realizing that you can make things at home so much easier. Like I, we make our own laundry detergent here. Um, I can make a huge barrel for $3 and there's no chemicals. It cleans better. It smells better and it is so much cheaper than you know your Tide Pods and it's not putting, it's better on your skin, you're not putting any like microplastics um, in the oceans or in your washing machine. Um, so there's, that's basically how you know homesteading is, you start with something small and then you realize that you know this is better for your health, it's better for the environment, it's better for your community and then you just kind of grow from there so every time 
we have something we're like okay this you know we're let's tinfoil like rotted tinfoil or we can go buy more tinfoil or is there like a replacement is there something that we can do that is more sustainable to our environment that can help that um, in a better way so that's basically how I started and how I've been doing it. And I just noticed that there's a really big trend in that as well. Um, but again, a lot of people are like, oh, this is all new. Um, you know, this is brand new, but this is nothing of this is new. It's just we're kind of new into touch with it. Whereas, you know, back in the 1800s, if you take a trip at the museum, um, that's that's how your way of life, you know, if you wanted to have ice cream in the summer and there's no ice in the summer, like how are you preserving ice in order to make ice cream and how are you making your own butter and how exactly are you going to eat that apple um, in the middle of winter. So um, it's just a, a lifestyle and, you know, if you want, you know, good sustainable stuff, then you kind of make it your own. Yeah. So, so there's somebody here who wants to know how to make that detergent now. Okay, great. <laughs> oh, and great fruit peels. Okay. Um, so how do you make detergent? Detergent is super easy. I should do a whole class on that one um, because I make my own shampoos, conditioners, body wash, um, candles. Um, so laundry detergent is just washing soda. There's baking soda. Um, and the lavender oil, like right from the garden. Um, so we actually use either oranges or lemon peels as well, just to have the citrus fruit. So you can pick your own scent that way, or if you don't want a scent, you don't have to have one. Um, and then you just put it in with uh, water and Castile soap. And um, it's only $3 to make the whole thing. Um, and someone said, um, uh, can, can I make, make the cleaner with grapefruit? Yeah, you can make the cleaner with grapefruit peels. Um, a lot of different citrus as well. You can do lemon as well. Um, I just prefer orange, but um, you switch it up as well. You can even throw in some lavender in there if you'd like. But uh, for cleanliness, I use you know citrus. Yeah, just the grapefruit peels and vinegar. Or... Yeah, you can use vinegar. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Anything else? Oh, Was there exact measure measurements for like this Castile soap? And yeah, there's an exact measurement if anyone's like actually fish. interested, if they want to, you know, send me an email or something, I can send the recipe um, over for how to make any of that. It's, it's a lot of fun. So no easy ratios. It's, it's easy. Yeah. So um, if if you want to have a second session on how to make cleaners, or if you just uh, want to find out about the detergent, if you could send an email to info at uh, durhamdigs.ca, we can um, uh, make that happen. Yeah. Or if anyone wants to see, like, um, you know, we got honey from the beehive. So if anyone's ever interested in you know, how to harvest honey from the bees um, and how to do it in a respectful, sustainable way. I don't actually even eat honey myself. I only have bees to save the bees. Um, and you never want to take all their honey from them anyways and have them starve to death or, you know, swarm or leave the hive. So if anyone was interested in anything to do with bees keeping, then mm -hmm. that'd be great too. Yeah, send, send us an, an email or, or stick it in the chat so we know how many people are are interested, but um, you can certainly get a hold of us. Um, let me type that in the chat. So um, I hope I have that Durham Diggs. Um, yeah. So that's us, but um, I guess I would like to, I mean, it, I think even um, when I was growing up, we were a lot more, uh, we, we did a lot more practical things and we were more conservationist. We just, we just did that. It, it changed very rapidly, um, rapidly. So I would be interested in hearing any, anybody else's experiences. Is there anybody on, on tonight? that had, um, can remember a time when we, we used a lot of stuff and conserved a lot of um, things in the home. Like remember those times when we were saving the milk bags, washing them out. I can't tell you how many people I knew from my era that, that did that, saved 
twist ties and um, things like that. Yeah, or even pop tabs too. Yeah. Anybody have any tips from from what they do in their homes that they would like to share? You're a very quiet bunch tonight. You're not our <laughs> usual rowdy group that has a lot to say. And and you're mostly anonymous. <laughs> I mean, you've kind of covered a lot of ground here. So it's like, <laughs> is there, is there any questions? Are there, are there any other questions for, for Jamie? Yes, go ahead, CJ. I'll go ahead and share. Um, actually, I live in the northern part of Durham and I have a homesteading group here for local friends in the community and I have a broader group for um, Durham region and we do well before, prior to COVID it started with like eight or nine women that would come into my kitchen and we would learn skills together. Um, unfortunately we can't do that right now but uh, it's something that I would like to continue with. And I would just like to thank you for sharing this crash course with us tonight. You did share a lot, um, but you had asked for things about growing up. My parents are first generation Canadians, So they brought with them a lot of um, traditional cooking styles and preparation of food and communal preparation of food. And we lived in Toronto, like deep, deep in Toronto and we they still maintain some of those um, cultural practices that we did for food preservation so we would smoke our own meat we would slaughter our own pig and we would take turns uh, doing that with our aunts and uncles so by the time October came around everybody had enough pork and sausage uh, for the entire family so I just wanted to share that with you um, that that was something that really brings me and that I want to continue to share and do with my kids. So I just wanted to share that with you that it's really important to share these skills. Well, that's, that's uh, awesome. That's really cool to have a group like so, that. So Lovely. CJ, if you have uh, any links or um, um, for your homesteading groups, can you pop those in the chat if you want to share those so that others will know? I knew there was something in, in North Durham because I heard a little something on the grapevine, but um, sometimes it's hard to, to find things. So if we have some connections, that would be great. To share a story. No, no brave people. <laughs> All right, if there's no questions, uh, Jamie, do you have anything else you wanna share? Um, yes, there's always tons, but uh, I mean, you know, I think that's that's good for this one, I would think. I don't wanna overwhelm anything. Okay. But, yeah. so, so do please stay in touch. And if you want to uh, connect with uh, the Nourish and Develop Foundation or, um, or dig you can check out our our websites um what uh, can you uh, zoe can you share your your email or your website in the chat or verbally and uh if you want to get in on the newsletter or any of the information on our websites there's resources on dig and i know zoe has various things happening and she's up in north durham and cannington so um, we sort of cover north and south of um, between us and, and the rest of Durham. So there are newsletters, there are dig bits, and we actually have our backyard gardening um, uh, how to start um, booklet on there that you can download or, or um, just uh, read on online. There are other things. So thank you all. And uh, our next uh, couple of things that are coming up, our next uh, table talk is on container container gardening um, with Master Gardener Pam Love. So really growing veggies in, in containers. And uh, then don't forget in June, we will be having a, our book, our book club will be meeting again. In between then, I, 
I don't, uh, I don't know where I put my dates on that. Um, so we do have the date we're going to vote. You'll get a selection of three books. And we'll vote on on those books, and then uh, Zoe will send out the information on which book was chosen, and then everybody reads like crazy and comes back for I think it's June twenty third, Zoe, and um, they they are really, really that group that uh, that that have been going with the with the book club. So I hope maybe you'll consider joining us for that as well. They're focused on. Uh, food, uh, food issues. So we do want to talk about the book club a little bit. Sure. Um, the book club, as per our last meeting, the book club selections for the next one are, are more focused on climate change and environmentalism. So uh, we haven't released the books yet. But there's, uh, now you're testing me, Mary. I have to look up which, all the book titles. <laughs> But um, well, they can watch for those to be sent out. They'll be being yeah, sent out. All of I want to read all three of them, so I'm happy with whatever selected. But there's a great, um, a great selection coming up that we've um, uh, chosen in partnership with Rock Library. So I think it'll make for a really great conversation in June. Okay. So thank you very much, and um, we'll hopefully see you in May and June. Um, pass the word along. Thank Great. you. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie, so much. I'll Thank be talking you. to you, you further. <laughs> Great. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Have a great night.